hear an awful lot these days about young people mm -hmm. and the impact on their mental health that COVID and, and other factors have had. We've, you, you've not had the full breadth of education that you might have had because of those effects. I mean, are any of you, you and your friends, struggling a little bit at the moment? I think um, definitely over exam period, um, and like you say, coming from COVID and stuff like that, um, being in lockdown, trying to revise for my GCSEs um, in 2021 and just being at home, it, it was really difficult because I couldn't communicate with my friends properly. I do feel quite lucky that we live in this day and age where social media and we can communicate quite well, but it's not the same, is it, being in person? And definitely going into A-levels, I feel like we didn't have as, like, good as skills as we would have had if that makes sense because obviously we hadn't seen people for two years and then we're all trying to make new friends um in 2022 starting year 12 so that was definitely quite difficult and i have seen people have really bad mental health issues because of being at home all the time especially when you're a teenager and you're going through puberty and all your hormones are changing you're bound to feel a bit you know have a bit of anxiety about um everything changing and having that on top of it and then going into a huge change like A-levels, it, it all mounts up and I've just, it's not been a very good experience and I don't feel like they've taken that into account this year. And yeah, and all power to you for this. And as mentioned before, you're, you're the first in, in the family to, to go. Your dad had a go at university, but, but not mm -hmm. for very long. Despite all of that, you've been confident enough. You've gone out there, you've made the applications, you've picked your universities and, and, and you are sitting at home hoping, hoping that it all goes well. I mean, does, does the financial side of things, does that not perhaps concern you a little bit? The financial side is one of my biggest worries, especially with the cost of living crisis. So when, and the biggest thing is as well, when I applied to university, the cost of accommodation was different to what it is now. So I've set in stone where I want to go and then they've increased the prices. So um, for accommodation it's really expensive now they've put the prices up so much not just at Durham but at every single university so when I was applying it wasn't that high and this, and with um, inflation being so high over because you apply don't you about a year before something mm. like that and it was inflation was totally different a year ago to what it is now so accommodation has accounted for that and things like the cost of food I didn't know the cost of food was going to be this high um, a year ago. So now I'm going into university in September with the worry of, am I going to have enough to really survive? And um, with my parents and, and things trying to help me in September, um, they're worried as well because they don't, we just don't know how much it's going to cost because it could go up more and more. I have to admit, I've got a special degree of sympathy for those who are going through the education system at the moment. Why is it that we are now describing that this current cohort of A-level students as the unluckiest? So this current cohort that are getting their A-level and other results across Britain uh, this morning uh, have been unlucky for a number of reasons. They've kind of faced a sort of perfect storm in, in many ways. So, of course, they suffered like many young people during the pandemic. They didn't go to school um, for, for a long time during that time. Uh, they wouldn't have done their GCSEs or equivalents at, at age 16. So this is the first time they've taken major you know, e examinations. And many of them will suffered uh, learning loss during that time. Of course, we've also had this cost of living crisis, which has affected a lot of, uh, of children and young people across the country. But also importantly, this cohort is the first in which we're coming back down to the tougher grade boundaries, if you like, the pre-pandemic grade. So there'll be fewer A's and A stars than previously. And on top of all this, and I hate to depress everyone on this, is <laughs> uh, it's tougher because there are more 18-year-olds now in the population. So, you know, we have demogra demographic booms uh, and troughs over the years, and we're currently in a boom that means there's more 18 year olds, but there aren't more places. There aren't more university places and universities, particularly at the moment, are having to think about international students as well as uh, home students because of the, the sort of funding uh, requirements to, to, you know, to make, balance the books, if you like. So, so it just means it's going to be very competitive uh, this year. So for a whole host of reasons, this is a tough 
uh, admissions round for this generation. Well, let's try and pick apart the, the, the factors that you were mentioning then. And we'll start with COVID. And look, I'm a father myself, but my boy is seven years old. So the problems that, that we had were more to do with socialisation rather than studying to get, into, to get into university. But I suppose that no matter the age that you are at, there will be plenty of kids who have struggled, not just academically, but with their mental health as a result of COVID. Absolutely. So, you know, a lot of my studies look at the learning loss that have been suffered by those people, actually not just low income, but middle income backgrounds as well. So there's th th those children have suffered academically, but also um, th there's been a real issue, a, a, a sort of tsunami almost of mental health uh, issues. Um, and, and that's as important, by the way, as the academic uh, issues. And many young people um, uh, have missed out on that socialisation. So if you're if you're sort of 15, 16, 17, these are the years where you start to become more independent. You, you, make, you make friends and, and, and as much of your development is about that socialisation as, as, as it is interaction in the classroom. So, for example, one of the things that we're, we're, we're finding this year is that a lot of young people including my daughter actually funny enough are deferring entry in into university and and i think one of the reasons we're seeing a lot of young people do that is they just want a break you know and who can blame them in many ways and maybe you know actually live a little before going uh, to do that degree course so i think that's a a reflection of what you say when you say that it's not just the richest it's it's also the the middle classes that are being affected by it. that suggests to me that the overwhelming majority of students are going to have been negatively impacted by what is going on and if we take those the, the normalization of a level results i mean that could, that could have a really detrimental effect on huge numbers of kids just to explain exactly how that 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 process that, that the minister nick gibb has been talking about to add weight and credibility to qualifications how that is of, going of a grades of b grades at the, at the top of the grades distribution um but at some point uh, the government was faced with this dilemma of when do you bring it back down to the grade distributions that we were experiencing uh, before the pandemic okay and, and so um, last year, it was a sort of halfway house um, in terms of bringing back down these, these great boundaries. This year, it will be broadly the same as the pre-pandemic years. Um, so that just means that uh, a lot of young people will not uh, get, uh, you know, are less likely to get those, those A's and B's that they need for those, you know, very highly selective sort of degree places. The other issue I think we'll face this year is that children get predicted a grade okay by their teachers and then on results day we find out whether they actually achieve those predicted grades if you don't then it, it actually opens you up a whole new pathway which we call clearing uh, which is basically what are the alternative options given that you might not have met the degree offer that you you know the degree you applied for uh, and it makes it quite complicated. I, I, I have advocated for a, what we call a post-qualifications admission system, which basically means you apply with your grades, right? But we're not in that place at the moment. The problem for this year's cohort is that teachers didn't have uh, proper GCSE results to base those uh, uh, um, predictions on. So there are many people, many experts in the sector are worried that they those predictions might not be as robust. Um, there, there's always uh, um, uncertainty in those predictions, but there could be more uh, this year than previous years. And what I try to do, and, and in my own little way, trying to advise and help uh, some young people, is not to rush into those decisions as well. Because remember, um, certainly in England, you, you know, you're paying a lot of money for these degrees now, fees of £9,000 above, living costs. These are life-defining decisions, and I do think that we force uh, young people in the current system to make decisions very quickly. And if you don't have all the advice to, to, for how to navigate the university system, I think it's very difficult. Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel.
you will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.